Welcome to Daily Living with Father Chapin, where we consider God's Word and how we might be able to apply it into our daily living. Yes, my friend, that is what we do. Sometimes the Bible can be a bit confusing, so we bust it down like a fraction. We're asking questions like, hey, what do these Gospels have to do with me? That's what I want to know. How can I take these Gospels? They come to me each and every week and apply them into my daily living so that I can become a reflection of God's love to a world, let's face it, don't know God for sure, and definitely is in deep need of more love. Don't you think? I mean, take a look around, my friend. There's a lot of bad news bears out there. How can I take the good news of Jesus Christ as presented in his Gospels and apply it into my daily living so that I can become a, well, a light in that darkness. I want to be a tool in the hand of God making present his kingdom. Not someday, but today and every day. And that's what this show's all about. Oh, so glad that you joined us today. We got a good show today. Today, we're going to be talking about a promise. So I ask you to quiet your minds. Let, let us open up our ears so that God can, can speak to us. Let us open up our eyes to see what the message would be. God's ready to take you to school, my friend. Are you ready to be the student? What do you say we just get right on into it? We are hearing from the Gospel of Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. And you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. The gospel of the Lord. And what a gospel it is, my friend. Oh, we got a whole lot to talk about with this, so... Call in the kids. It's going to be good. This is Daddy Living. I'm Father Chapin. You stick around. We'll be right back. We're going to talk about this gospel and a few other things here as we consider God's word and how we might be able to apply it into our daily living. Welcome back to Daily Living. Today I want to talk about something that is common to all of humanity. Something that every human being that has ever walked this planet has had to deal with. One of those absolutes in our biological makeup. All of humanity feels emotion. The capacity to feel. And, and one of the primary of all emotions is fear, anxiety. From the earliest of recorded history, mankind has feared its environment. It's, a, it's an environment that most of the time we have little to no control over. We have fear. We, we fear change. We fear future. We fear death. We are anxious and fearful people, some more than others, I suppose, but fear is universal. It is in you, it is in me. Now, as I've mentioned recently in the past, my bishop has moved me to a very beautiful part of the state, Elkins, West Virginia. And it, it is beautiful. Highway 92, which is how you get there from White Sulphur Springs, is stunning. I, it, I feel like I'm in Ireland, it's just gorgeous. Seems like every, every corner I come around, there's another open field stretching out into the sun, peppered with yellow flowers, hay bales, you know, the red barn, you know what I'm talking about. The other day, some, some issues came up, circumstances that I had no control over. And as I was driving down this beautiful road, it occurred to me, 
that I was so stuck in my own head, just grinding, you know, the what if this, what if that, you know, rehearsing all those conversations that I'll never have, that I never took the time to even look out the window. You know what I mean? You ever been there? The Great Debating Society in full swing? The executive board of me, myself, and I was in session, and I gotta say, I was really bad company that day. And in that moment, I realized that I had no peace, I mean none, a restless heart. Today, we're gonna talk about a promise that Jesus made. And given the fact that a promise is only as good as the one who's making a promise, I think it's fairly safe to say that this is a promise we can all count on. This is a promise that will surely deliver. And this is the promise that came to mind as I was driving down that country road just the other day. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Now, I truly believe in that promise, but, but I got to admit and confess it on many other days. I do not experience the reality of that promise. There are days when I'm anxious. There are days when I'm irritated. There's days when I'm filled with resentment and discontent. You know, maybe I'm just feeling sorry for myself, or maybe I got some real justifiable anger because I've been wrong, okay? But there are days when peace seems to be very far away. Days where I fear the future. Like I said, the bishop just moved me. It was a big move. It was, it was a Tuesday after Easter Sunday. And I was at the beach with my mom and dad. And I got a call from the chancery, vicar of clergy. And immediately I'm thinking, oh man, what did I do this time? You know, because generally the chancery does not call just to tell you what a great job you're doing. So I'm thinking, oh no. And I'm being told, you have to move and you have to move immediately. And by the way, you have to inform your parish in three days that you're moving. I'm like, I'm on vacation. I mean, God has just got a great sense of humor. But I've been living in my present assignment for seven years. So change. All those questions. What awaits me in my new assignment? What will it be like? Will they like me? And then, you know, that deep, dark, secret stuff comes out like, you know, am I a good priest? Will I fail? Anxiousness, a restless heart. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. St. Augustine, who's one of my favorite saints, you know, he writes about this in Confessions of St. Augustine. In fact, did you know that St. Augustine is the only person, maybe in the history, I think only, at least I know of, that converted to Catholicism, was baptized, ordained a deacon, and then ordained a priest, and then installed as a bishop in one day. <laughs> one day! Talk about fast tracking. And uh, he, he writes about how his mother, Monica, used to pray for him every day because he was living a life of reckless abandonment, tasting the fruit of anything that looked good. Self-will run riot. And he wrote, I was in love with love and I hated safety. What does that even mean to be in love with love? What does it mean to hate safety? Well, first of all, in regards to love, I would suggest that St. Augustine, at least at the time, because he would come to find out later, he didn't really know what love was. He was in love with fantasy. He was in love with lust. He was in love with passion, the excitement, the next adventure, the next conquest. You know, I knew a guy that was married five times and was getting divorced again, and he told me, and I think he was being as honest as he could be, that he loved them all. And I really think that he believed that. But I would suggest that just as St. Augustine at the time, he didn't really know or understand what love really is. You know, I got a brother, I talk about him all the time, he's crazy. You know, used to live in Colorado, used to ride motorcycles, used to race motorcycles up the canyon. He used to tell me this story one day. He told me the story that he was racing his bike up the canyon, just storming up, screaming up this mountain, chasing another bike. And he was going so fast that around one of those steep curves, you know, where it drops off a thousand feet on one side, he almost didn't make it. 
I mean, his tire was right on that outside line and his knee was almost right on the pavement. And he said when he got to the top of the mountain and the bike was finally stopped, he was so full of emotion that when he, when he got off the bike, he just started to weep, which he said was kind of embarrassing in front of his biker friends. But he told me that it was the most alive he had ever felt. Now, let me just say, I think that's crazy, okay? I don't like going fast, but for some people, speed causes adrenaline, and adrenaline can become an addiction. And of course, he continued his addiction until the day when a van in the right-hand lane took a left turn and it was over, because newsflash people, people don't see motorcycles. But anyway, I think it was that adrenaline addiction which St. Augustine might have been getting at when he said, I hated safety. And you know what drives this need for an adrenaline buzz? A restless heart. I'm convinced that that's what motivated St. Augustine to write one of his most famous of quotes. You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless, and they will not find their rest until they find their rest in you. A restless heart. My friend, it is in you. It is in me. It goes all the way back to the garden, a place of no toil, no fear, just pure and uncoerced fellowship with God till the serpent shows up with the two big lies. After Eve had said, well, God said we can eat from all the trees in the garden except this one tree, and if we eat this one tree, that we will die. Lie number one, you will not die. Lie number two, you can be as God. And we know how that all worked out. They ended up hiding in the trees with fear and shame. And we have been living with fear and shame ever since. Fear and shame are the natural consequences of going against God's will. Fear of what is to come. Shame as to what has happened. Fear and shame were introduced to a world that was supposed to be perfect. And these toxic twins, fear and shame, they've been with us ever since. They never left. You know what the worst part about fear and shame is? It, it, it divides us. It separates us, not only from ourselves, but it keeps us from a personal relationship with God. And it is fear and shame that breed a restless heart. Blaise Pascal, 1600s, I think, once wrote, the heart has its reasons of which reason know nothing. And boy, isn't that true? I mean, it is amazing what a restless heart will drive people to do. In fact, I heard about this guy in California that went to an army surplus store and bought 45 used weather balloons. And that afternoon, he strapped them all to his lawn chair, okay? And along with a six pack of beer and a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and a BB gun, because you see the plan was he was gonna just shoot the balloons out, you know, one at a time when it was time to come down. Oh yeah, he had really thought it out, okay? So anyway, he gets in the lawn chair, he cuts the rope, thinking he might go up 100 feet or so, the balloons take him to 11,000 feet. That's two miles in a lawn chair. I mean, think about it. Two miles over Los Angeles, putting him directly in the middle of one of the busiest spaces of air traffic in, in the country. LAX has to shut down for two hours. He was too frightened to shoot out any of the balloons. Stayed up there for a long time, way past two hours. Finally, he comes down and he's met by, well, police <laughs> and some reporters. And as you might imagine, they had a few questions. I think they were trying to figure out whether he was sane or not. And they asked, were you, were you afraid? And he said, uh, yeah. And they said, would you do it again? He said, uh, no. And when they asked, well, why'd you do it? He said, well, you can't just sit there. I guess a lawn chair and a six pack of beer just wasn't enough for that guy. This is Daily Living on Father Chapin. You stick around. We'll be right back and we will continue to talk about this amazing gospel and how we might be able to apply it into our daily living. Hi, this is Father Chapin, host of Daily Living with Father Chapin. The broadcast ministry is growing leaps and bounds with more viewers day by day. And we are now rolling out a new opportunity to partnership with this ministry so we can continue to take the good news to a lost world. At the end of this broadcast, we'll have the details. So call in the kids, maybe get a piece of paper and a pencil. It's going to be great. 
Welcome back to Daily Living. Just for the break, we were talking about a restless heart and all the crazy things it can drive humanity to do. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Now, when Jesus was first speaking these words, he was talking with devout and practicing Jews. They were practicing their Judaic faith with great fervor. And when he says, all things have been handed over to me by my father, no one knows the son except the father, and no one knows the father except the son, and to anyone to whom the son wishes to reveal him, that did not go over well. That was not received. I mean, imagine. These are religious folk. I mean, they're practicing the religion with great fervor. They're trying to be righteous. Why? So that they can go to heaven one day and be with the Father. I mean, isn't that what drives all of religion, to be with our Creator someday in heaven? So when Jesus, who at this point is a relatively young man, says, if you want to know the Father, got to come to me, because I'm the only one who knows him. So I'm the only one who can make the introduction. Can you see? This created a bit of a problem. Can you understand how this might have upset some people? Might have created a bit of fear, a bit of anxiety. And what do people do with fear and anxiety? Well, they turn it into anger. And that's exactly how our world reacts today with Jesus. But I can hear these guys back then. Who does this guy think he is? The only one who knows the Father. All things handed over to him. He's the only one that can introduce us to God. Bah! <laughs> and the world turns. Like I said, not much has changed. We live in a world where bah is the constant refrain. You bring up Jesus in public as the way, the truth, and the life. See how, you, see how that's met with. Scorn. Take my yoke. Learn from me. For I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. My friends, we live in a world that is full of restless hearts. Don't want to hear nothing about a yoke. No, because we want our freedom. Because that's what it's all about. Live and let live. We have bought into the idea that a liberated heart, free from every constraint or rule, is where peace, contentment, and rest are are found in my friend that is a lie that is a lie that has caused much pain this world has convinced us that a yoke or any other belief system for that matter will impede our freedom and well we don't want to hear about it well let me tell you something the idea that a restless heart is going to decide what is good and what is evil <laughs> i mean think about it when God said, if you navigate that tree, it's going to kill you. Being the fact that he's God, don't you think it makes sense that he would know what he was talking about, my friends? This myth that we can navigate the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is very dangerous because it can lead many of us to arrive at the idea, much like the Pharisees, that if we just worship correctly, check the boxes, accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, well, then we got reservations in eternity. But what happens so often is that many of us accept Jesus as our Savior. That sounds good, but not as our Lord. In other words, yeah, we go to church on Sunday, but on Wednesday, it has no effect. In fact, if we were ever to be brought up on charges of Christianity, there simply would not be enough evidence to convict us. Consider this question. Does your heart really know what's good and what's evil, even with good intentions? Hear me when I say, if we follow blindly the impulses of our heart, we will always be restless. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke, learn from me, for I'm meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. That's the promise. When Jesus first spoke these words, the audience would have understood a yoke 
as a piece of farming equipment. A yoke is that harness that you put around the neck of a beast of burden, like a horse or an ox, pulling like a wagon or a plow, okay? And this would be understood as a double yoke, which was very common for the day. A yoke was put on two horses or, or two oxen to pull a plow or a wagon. And often was the case that when there was a young horse or a young ox, kind of a rookie, they would team it up with a more experienced, an older animal who knew the way. Does this make sense to anybody out there? Now, when, when, when you team a young, inexperienced ox with a more seasoned veteran ox, who knows the way, who's the stronger ox? Well, generally, it would be the younger one. So if the younger ox, who is stronger than the older ox, says, you know what? I don't want to go that way. I don't want to do that. Starts pulling away from, resisting the older ox. What do you think the furrow's going to look like? I mean, isn't it going to be crooked and all over the place like so many of our lives? Think of the younger ox as your will. Jesus is saying, take my yoke. Learn from me. Turn your will over to my care. And I'm going to take you home and you will find rest. For I am meek and humble of heart, and my yoke is easy and my burden light. My friends, this lie that somehow a yoke is gonna limit my freedom, this lie that somehow a yoke is gonna curtail my happiness. Let me tell you, and I can speak from personal experience, the most freeing thing one could do for a restless heart is to become accountable to Jesus and yoke with him daily, bringing our burdens to him. That's the promise, people. That's it. If you have a restless heart, bring your burdens to Jesus. Bind yourself to him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. Once upon a time, there was a farmer heading into town. And he's on a horse-drawn wagon. He's going on down the road. And as he's going along, he spies an older man walking on the side of the road, carrying a very heavy load on his back. Moved with compassion, the driver stops, invites the old man to ride with him in the back of the wagon. Well, the stranger gratefully accepts, climbs on board, and they continue down the road. After a while, that farmer turns to check on his passenger and is surprised to find him sitting on the back of the wagon, but he's still carrying that heavy backpack. It's still strapped to his shoulders. So he calls out. He says, hey, why don't you take that pack off? And the old man said, yeah, and he did. And oh, I see it every Sunday. People bringing their burdens to church and walking back out with the same burdens they came in with. I can suggest what they need to do. I can tell them to take the pack off, but I cannot do it for them because it is a solo mission to yoke with Jesus. Jesus says, come to me, not yesterday, not next week. Come to me now, all you who labor in our burden, and I will give you rest. My friends, come to him one day at a time, one hour at a time. Learn from him, pacing our day with him, yoking with him and he will help you carry your burden. Not necessarily taking them away, but he will come alongside you, taking on your restless heart. And suddenly, that burden will become light and you will find rest for yourselves. You know, every day in this country, Somebody does something nice for somebody else. Today, why don't you let that somebody be you? This is Daily Living on Father Chapin. Hope you can come back next week and we'll do it again. Until then, I hope you let God live in your life. And I bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
Hi, this is Father Chapin, host of Daily Living with Father Chapin. First of all, it's such a privilege to be able to come into your homes each and every week to share the good news. I get letters just about every day from people all over the country expressing their appreciation. I want to share one with you, dear Father Chapin. That woman in the store last week was right. I totally understand your way of explaining the gospel in ways I never have before, and I love your show. I am sorry that I cannot send you some money, but I guess you can pretty much figure out from the address of this letter that I am in prison. I had to sell a soap dish just to get enough money to buy the stamps for this letter. But I really wanted you to know how great your show is and how much it helps me in my daily living. P.S. What I wouldn't do for a tater tot of any kind. Well, that's kind of an inside joke, but my friends, you see, well, it's not that inside. We talked about it last week, but the only way I'm reaching this man is through you. This show is 100% funded by donations from people such as yourself. I'm asking you today to consider a daily living partnership, a monthly gift of any kind, and I will send you a daily living newsletter once a month, as well as a written script, a transcript of the show every Friday previous to the broadcast, as well as a small gift of appreciation for helping us keep this on the air. But the bishop has moved me, so I'm in a new church, St. Brendan's, 181 Brendan Way, Highway 250, Elkins, West Virginia, 26241. Or you can go online and donate at mydailyliving.com. Once again, I thank you for watching and I appreciate your consideration.